Isaiah 60, verse 19. Isaiah 60, verse 19. Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor the brightness of, listen to this, the brightness shall the moon give light to you, but the Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God, your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And the days of your mourning shall be ended. Also your people shall all be righteous. <laughs> <They're> sh <laughs> Listen to this. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planning, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. My message tonight, it's happening now. It's happening now. Spirit of God, like you always do, I've never stepped on a platform without humbling myself before you, without anointing myself, believing that you'll give me something I do not have in the natural. I believe for the supernatural ability to preach and to teach your word and to declare truth in a time of darkness. I believe in your spirit. I believe your spirit lives in me. Therefore, as I open up my mouth, I bring life and not death. Father, we thank you right now for the increase of the order that you set. I dare not try to serve as a father until I have served as a son. I fulfill my responsibility as a son. Therefore, anoint me as a father that I may decree with authority what you have placed in me to bring liberty to all those who are under the sound of my voice. Whether they are doing church ministry or entrepreneurship, whatever it be in an executive form, Father, let this particular word ignite something in every part of their being that cannot be stopped nor put out by the the doubt and unbelief of those who surround them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Our King, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, put a hallelujah in the atmosphere. Before I get into my points here, you can take your seat. I, I discovered, um, and I've known this for a while, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't raised up uh, in my biblical walk like many others. I was not... Uh, intertwined in, in religious thinking and ways of op operating. I was not birthed out of religious doctrine and rhetoric that produced nothing. I was uh, privileged to be able to maneuver around some things and get to a place to where my life was completely submitted to God because I didn't experience a lot of things that would deter me and cause me to think negative towards the things of God. So I was uh, maneuvered around and kept safe for a long period of time. I did not serve multiple pastors. I served one pastor. And, uh, and once I was uh, uh, adult enough, then God would shift me to the next person that I was supposed to serve under. But now, uh, if he had not shifted me, as I look back, I see where I would have been hindered if I didn't shift. So not belittling uh, the previous pastor, it was that, that they had a certain place they were taking their people to, and there was a certain place that God wanted to take me to. So therefore he maneuvered around and he shifted me to make sure I was in the place that he wanted me to be. I have not been where he did not want me to be. I am not right now where he does not want me to be. I am in the center of my assignment right now, without question, without question. I am not in doubt. I am not having a career crisis. I am not having a membership of a church crisis. I am not having a biblical crisis. I am exactly where God wants me to be. And God says, I am pleased with you. Yes, yes. So I don't have to ask a board if they, they're pleased. I don't have to ask the, the staff if they're pleased with me because I'm the boss. But it, God had to do that because he trusts me. God trusts me. God 
trust me. Yeah, God trusts me. It's happening now. It's happening now. Um, I was telling Sasha, and we have a lot of conversations. I was telling her, Sasha, the way that I'm wired is when I go in to speak, I always speak into that moment. That is the prophetic side of my apostolic structure. So I am sensitive to what God is doing and saying now to capture the moment. So I am not preaching or teaching from notes that I picked up from someone else and I did not go back into my arsenal to get a message for tonight. I believe that God is speaking right now to his people right now and they need a right now word because if people are going to believe, if you don't say something about right now, the people are not going to believe you. They are not going to believe you. So I am successful at every encounter that I have to go minister into a church because when I get into the atmosphere, I am now sensitive to what's in that atmosphere. What the preacher has spoken is now open and I can hear it in my spirit and flow with it. So I've never gotten a bad report from anywhere I preach. In fact, they asked me, were you in my meetings? They asked me, were you at home sitting at the table with us? They asked me questions like that because I live a consecrated life. Somebody say consecrated. Consecrated means set apart. I know what my purpose is. So I keep myself from the filth that will disturb, d d d disturb the sanctity of my being. So I'm not in the company of strange, crazy people. I'm not so that I can be effective at communicating what God wants communicated to the people that he loves. Now, let's dive into this and whether you receive it or not, that's up to you at 830. I'm done I'm going to get some fish. All right. Because if you love going nowhere, there's plenty of nowhere to go. My, my first point is this, based on the scripture that I read, God and his glory shall become your source of knowledge and enlightenment. Some of y'all are just like Adam and Eve looking at that tree trying to get knowledge from it. Not understanding in this particular time during a pandemic, you need to get the knowledge and the enlightenment from God as the source. If you didn't know, you're going to know pretty soon. If you were struggling at some point, you, and it's not going to be long, you're going to realize that you're going to need God and his glory as your source. So when it says, no longer will you need the sun, no longer will you need the enlightenment of the moon, those are not going to be sufficient. Let me go ahead and tell you. What you think lit you yesterday won't light you today. The knowledge you had yesterday is not for sufficient for today. Everything changed in a moment. You're not in the same day you were in yesterday. You got to be flexible enough to shift in every day. If you're expecting the remedies of yesterday to impact today, you're fooling yourself. So God is saying to Isaiah and saying to the people that the moon and the sun will no longer be the thing that gives you the enlightenment, gives you the knowledge or brightens your day. He said, I am going to use something else. How do you think those things came into existence? They came out of God. They came out of God. Anything God created came out of him. So he said, I am no, no longer going to use the sun. I'm no longer going to use the moon. I'm going to use myself. The only way you're going to get through this, this pandemic effectively and on top. It's God's glory comes over your life. Are you going to be crazy? By the time this thing's over, this is not the end of it. The impact of it is coming now. 
And that's what we don't understand. That's why we need somebody that's consecrating themselves, setting themselves apart, here's listening to heaven to come and tell us what heaven is saying and what is the diagnosis for the next thing that we'll do. They, based on what I'm hearing, they can't put more cars on the car lot because the parts are not coming in because COVID has slowed down production so much, they cannot manufacture the cars fast enough to get them on the lots. So what you're seeing is empty lots. So the impact of the virus is having an impact on the productivity or the manufacturer. So you, you in here have not felt the impact of it. You want to know why? Because I am proactive. I am a seer. But not only am I a seer, I am going to prepare. I am going to be proactive to make sure that what happens there doesn't derail here. And you have to do that. You have to be wired like that. I have to have that enlightenment and knowledge of what's going to happen behind this. Because if I don't have enlightenment and I don't have knowledge, I'm going to be at the tail end of this. And I don't like being the tail. I spend enough time being the tail. Some of y'all like being the tail. But I don't like being the tail. I'm not going to be the tail. Refresh is not going to be the tail. Refresh Nation is not going to be the tail. No, we're not going to be the tail. So we're going to be proactive and we're going to be enlightened. And we're going to have knowledge about things that we should have knowledge about so that we can keep thriving and moving forward. So God is going to be our source. Are we going to stand around all day speaking in tongues? No. Are we going to be at the church the whole day? Not if we don't work here. Absolutely not. But what we are going to do, we're going to give God the first part of our day so that we can maximize our day. Because there is no day without God. Hear me. There is no day without God. There is no light without God. There is no knowledge without God. Anything that's considered knowledge without God is foolishness. So God in his glory shall become our source of knowledge. We're not saying throw away your degree. We just ask you to use it in the, in the right place. You need that. That's very important. As you move up in higher levels of ministry, usually in mega churches, they don't want you coming and speaking without a master's or a doctorate. For those of you who think the anointing is just going to put you on somebody's great platform, you're fooling yourself. Your credentials are extremely important. So you need those, but it doesn't mean you rely on that because you need the light of God and you need his enlightenment and his knowledge. Next thing, stay with me. Y'all still here. The things you have been grieving over for an extended amount of time will end. In verse 20 of Isaiah 60, and the day of your mourning shall be ended. And the day of your mourning shall be ended. Some of you are wondering what's going on with you. You're still grieving. You're still grieving over a divorce. You're still grieving over a loss of job, a loss of wages. You're still grieving over the death of a family member. You're still grieving over the death of a friend. You're, you're still grieving over the loss of a job or the loss of wages. You're still grieving. You wonder why people misbehave. They misbehave because they're still grieving. You wonder why your marriage is not working because they're still grieving over their last marriage. You'd be surprised at how many people you're in relationship with that are still grieving over the last relationship. You'd be surprised when you come to church how many people are still grieving over the last church they were a part of. We deal with a whole lot of that. That's why they want to they recreate this church into what hurt them. No, you're still grieving over that. You're still thinking about that. You're still haunted by that. You got to let that go. Or you'll never be able to encounter what God really wants to do in this relationship. I am so tired of people dealing with me like they dealt with their old pastor. I am not your old pastor. 
sitting up here with all these skeletons talking about, well, well, what you think about this? Are you thinking you still stuck on your old pastor was a thief? That means you're still grieving. And God wants to put an end to your grieving. Just because some people love me, huh? why y'all always got to talk about Apostle David? Because they're not grieving. You be talking to me, talking about me too if you wasn't grieving. Only reason you don't talk about certain things is because you're still grieving. And I'm watching you still, uh, watching over that coffin, sitting out there at that plot in that cemetery, you are still grieving. You got to get over it because the lights are on now and all of us can see that you're still grieving and whoever goes into covenant with you are not not going to have a good experience because you're still grieving the last place that you were injured. Ain't there ain't anything wrong with Refresh Family Church. It, what's wrong is you're still grieving. Man, I, I don't trust you still grieving. So the Bible says that God is going to put an end to your grieving. The only reason you question me is because you're grieving. That's the only reason you question me. You never say anything to me, but you don't have to say anything about your grief. With that phony smile on your face, you're still grieving. And somebody's got to get you out of that cemetery so you can really enter into true relationship, God-ordained relationship, anointed relationship, elevation relationship, because you will never enter into those relationships as long as you're grieving the way you're grieving. I realize this, no disrespect to anyone, but I have not been back to my mother's grave. Why haven't I been back? Because in order to lead you forward, I can't be hanging out at Zion Memorial. I'm not telling you what to do. You may not be a leader, an impact, high impact leader like me, but I can't be in the cemetery where dead things are and then come in here and preach a living word. So I, I let my mother's remains lay over there while I'm aiming for the heaven that she's in. Because see, I understand this. I am not going to grieve like that if I know she's ahead of me and not behind me. The problem is you don't have a clear revelation and a truth of the word. Because if you think you're leaving them behind, the Bible said, and those who remain will be caught up. That's talking about us. So if you ain't excited about seeing them again up there, you better get your little old self together. That's why we got too much of our opinion and not enough truth. I'm excited because I'm going to meet my mama at some point, not at Zion Memorial, not laying in a coffin in front of this church. I'm going to meet my mother in the air like the Bible promised me. And I believe it. I, I went over to serve for 16 months at my father's church after he transitioned. And I knew the task was great. I was coming into an international ministry that had impacted the entire world. And I knew it was a task, but I knew I had the faith to do my assignment. I knew I had the faith. So I am there in a, in a midweek service in a, on a Wednesday night, and I'm seeing all these people who are still grieving. So let me tell you, when they're grieving, you can't grieve. I'm going to take it a step further. When, when the congregation is grieving, leadership can't grieve. We all can't grieve at the same time. So if you're grieving, sit down. Because they grieving, you can't grieve right now. You got to pick a private time to grieve. You can't grieve publicly with them. Or, or let the grieving in. So stay with me. So what I've done in that service, Pastor Gary, at the end of the service, I ministered the message. And I said, I picked up my phone. And I scrolled through my phone and found my spiritual father's name. And I went over and I deleted his information. He ain't going to ever call me anymore. Am I, am I expecting a phone call from him again? 
So in order to lead them forward, and the church grew by thousands while I was there, in order to lead them forward, I had to delete grief. I didn't get the privilege of mourning while I was leading doing two mega churches in two different cities. So I deleted the information. I don't know what they thought about it, but I was able to lead effectively because my grieving ended with the delete. Do you want me to teach you how to cry all day or do you want me to teach you how to praise and celebrate your breakthrough? You, you choose because whatever I am on the inside, when I grab a microphone, I am going to release that to my audience. So I am protecting you. That's why consecration is so important because when I get up, if I'm in doubt and unbelief, then I'm going to release doubt and unbelief. If I'm a pervert, when I release, I'm going to release perversion to the congregation and through the stream. But if I am consecrated, if I'm over the hurdle, if I understand my body may be aching, but Jesus healed me over 2,000 years ago, I believe for my healing, so I release healing. So, so Isaiah is saying the days of mourning, which are the days of grieving, shall be ended. You want to know when grief ends? When you get a revelation. Grief only ends when you get a revelation. Only when you're enlightened does grief end. You want your grief to end? Open up your mind and your heart tonight and grief will end just like that. If you open up your mind and heart, you'll be over your ex-wife, your ex-husband that's married to somebody else and been married to them for the last 10 years. You want to get past some stuff? You want to get past some stuff? Open up your spirit right now. You want to get past your old church? Yeah, open up your heart tonight. There's an anointing on me to get you past your problem. It's not me, it's you. And we need to get you past your grief. It happened. We can't change what happened. But if we want to reach our future, we got to let that thing be cut off when the anointing shows up. I am so powerful because I don't have a leak. I have bad experiences. But I don't let it get to me because that's too grievous for me to carry that stuff around. It starts working against my health, starts working against my blood pressure. If you got health problems, sometimes health problems can be traced back to things you're grieving over. I went to my annual exam. My blood pressure was at 120 over 70. I, I'm leading in a pandemic. I'm leading in a pandemic. I'm dealing with every crazy person you could ever deal with. I'm making all types of business decisions and legal decisions, and my blood pressure is good. It's because I am not dragging around the grief of yesterday, trying to do today's ministry. I can't leave you stuck in yesterday. If you want to go forward, I have to let go of some stuff. And people wonder why y'all follow me. Y'all follow me because I'm not looking back. He's always got a word. He's always powerful. He's always digging through and finding something we need when we need it. You want to know why? Well, I am not stuck in yesterday. Let, let me just take it a little bit further. Georgia happened. It's over. Let's move forward. It's over, baby. We ain't rehearsing it. It ain't going to happen again. It's over. If I would have stayed there, we wouldn't have five locations. 
If I would have stayed there, I wouldn't be able to talk openly and plainly like I do. I, I raised up a church where I can say what I need to say. And ain't no devil in hell, no witch around here going to stop me from saying what I need to say up in here. And that's the way we feel refresh. We're not going to be muzzled. My sons, when they get up, my daughters, when they get up, they going to say what thus saith the Lord God. was like that. How in the hell you think I'm going to back up when I had a mentor that will say what he needed to say and then flex his muscles behind it? What do you want from me? You saw what he was. You get the same thing. That's what I do. That's who I am. You want a puppet? Go somewhere else. This boy is not a puppet. We take authority. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel somebody need to express that you are powerful. Keep sitting on me. I'm going to drive the hell out of you. You want to get disqualified? Stay in grief. But it's time for us to move forward. The time is now. Next point. People want to punish you with their insecurity. They want to punish you with their lack of faith. We have faith. We believe. Therefore, we access the kingdom of God. And it comes now. I, I'm going to say it. I only need you when you're paying me. You think I got a need? Turn the check back in. Where are my warriors at? Where, 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 where are my warriors at? Stop aborting your moment. Stop being rebellious. Stop being an atheist. Get in the flow of the move of God. Capture the moment. Maximize the moment. Find the apostolic of flow and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow. And flow.
you. Don't let critics stop you. Don't let religion stop you. Don't let haters stop you. Take a step. Take a step. Take a step. Take a step. You're in your future, baby. Your future is now. I said your future. They picked you for the team. They tried to cut you off of the team. They underestimated you. They looked at you and didn't see your future. Let me tell you why. God hid it from those crooks. I said God hid it from those crooks. They weren't nothing but a bunch of crooks. So God hid you from the crook. But right now, you're being released in your divine destiny. Right now, right now, right now, right now. yesterday and we were sitting there and everything that we're doing we're running it through my my law firm everything we're doing and he said uh, uh, Bishop he doesn't call me apostle that's fine I know who I am he said Bishop I'm concerned about this area over here because it doesn't properly uh, interpret who you are I said shut it down I said shut it down I don't know I don't need anything coming against my character I said, shut it down. He said, when we start it back up, we can include everything you want to include. But this right here seems questionable. He said, you have too much integrity to have anything around you that's questionable. I said, shut it down. I didn't have to pray about it. I didn't have to fast about it. I said, shut it down. So he shut it down yesterday. I'm telling you right now, where we are and what God wants to do, you don't need anything around you that's questionable. Shut it down. I said, shut it down. You're going too high, baby. They're going to shoot missiles at you, but you got to shut down all the foolishness because it's right now. It's right now. It's right now. It's happening now. Right now. Right now. now. When you're going high, has to be prepared. People think, well, he's overlooking this and he's overlooking that. I know how to prioritize. You're the one who spend money and ain't got it in the bank. You prioritize. You work on one specific area at a time. Reinforce that area, then move to the next area. Build a strong wall of defense against your adversaries because they're coming. They are coming. And if your walls are weak, I don't care how good the inside of your church is. If your walls are weak, they will come down. But we're here to last, baby, from generation to generation. Right now, I put it in the atmosphere. Right now, we're building right, right now. So get your mind off of foolishness and churchism and get your mind on the kingdom. Because what we're doing, there are enemies that want to impose. But if we are insulated, I said if we're insulated, 
Let the devil come. Let the fiery darts come. We shall still be standing. This ain't, this ain't no time to go cheap. This ain't no time to look for a bargain. This ain't no, no that, that's not the time. Because when you know you got something valuable on the inside, you don't go to Walmart for a blue light special. You don't, you don't know, you don't go to the thrift store for this kind of stuff. You got to get the real stuff. You got to get real stuff in place because the devil is constantly looking for the weaknesses. That's why you got to have people from band to singers to intercessors to ushers to greeters to teachers. They all got to be in sync with you because if they're not in sync with you, they open up a door from the enemy and the Bible says, give no place to the devil. I'm going to teach you, man. I'm going to teach you how to secure your home. I'm going to teach you how to secure your home where you're not too many when you have to make major decisions. I'm going to teach you how to insulate everything that belongs to you. So when the devil comes, let the, let the storms come. Let the winds blow. Let the waves come. But this house will be standing after it's all over. We need to fortify. God's about to pour some treasure out into your house. And you don't need to have open areas, insufficient areas, and unemployed people who act like they're employed. You got to build for it. Because success can be gone in a day. You got to build for it. Cut down on your toleration. You got too much value in your company. You can't, you can't tolerate it. You tolerate it. They will laugh with your enemies as you being destroyed. They'll go on record in interviews against you. And they used to work for you. People are flaky. They're just waiting for the next gig to come along. The next extra $10 to come along. This is about heart. This is about covenant. This is about agreement. And it's about inheritance. Because when you have those right, inheritance is yours. Only, only, only meekness. Only meekness can do it on this level. Only meekness. Only meekness can do it on this level. And what did Jesus say about the meek? He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. What did the scripture say? It says you're going to get your land. How many of y'all want your land? I want my land. I don't care if it's a 16 story building. I want my land. I don't care if it's a whole subdivision. I want my land. They never should have built a house on my property. Let me help you. Everything that they built on your property because they misread the deeds, it belongs to you. I don't think y'all heard me. They misread the property lines and spent five to ten million dollars on your property. Woo! Ah! Yeah! The wealth of the wicked is making a transfer. Put on, put on your righteousness. My, my next point would have been put on your righteousness. Put on your righteousness. Because everything they thought they could keep is coming to those who know how to wear their righteousness. When they start asking, what are you doing? Tell them I'm getting dressed. I said, what, what are you putting on? I'm putting on Jesus and his righteousness. I took off my filthy rags. I'm, I'm not filthy now. I'm, I'm wearing the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which means now I, I receive my inheritance. I receive my inheritance. When you put on Christ, receive your inheritance. You can't keep my stuff. I'm dressed for this. 
I'm, I'm, I'm dressed. I'm dressed for this. I'm, Brother Carl, I'm dressed for this. I, I'm not afraid. I am dressed for this. God, God ain't having no problem identifying me. I'm dressed for this. Yeah, yeah. Can't nobody take it. Those tricks ain't gonna get your stuff. I'm dressed for this. I'm not coming back down. Sister Lisa needs me. I'm not coming back down. There are people who are crying out for deliverance and there's something apostolically on me that'll deliver every generational demon that has, has hang around for the last 50 years. I'm not coming back down. I decree right now, like a wind stuff is lifting off of you right now. Anxiety is lifting off of you right now. It's a demon that's coming off of you right now. That's coming off of you right now. I decree and declare your deliverance right now. You will not be you will not be tormented by any spirit of darkness right now. That's coming off of you. You're gonna rest better tonight than you rested in the last six months. You're gonna rest tonight. It's coming off of you now. I'm breaking it now. I'm breaking it now. It doesn't have to have a change in the situation. There's a change in you. And I dare you to start celebrating right now. You're free. <laughs>